Casual Magic has been brought to you by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can get cool stuff. Use the code CASUAL to get 5% off of your sale. And then also by Coalesce Apparel, where you can get really cool t-shirts and stuff. And use the code Casual Magic to get 10% off your sale. And by Architect, a deck hosting website that doesn't really sell anything, but they like me and I like them. So kindly use them. And now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to Casual Magic, the show where we talk about the fun side of Magic the Gathering. My name is Shivan Button. and Casual Magic is brought to you by Cole Alaska Apparel, Cool Stuff, Inc., and Architect, and also by Quiver Time. Uh, I like having sponsors. They like having me. You guys should go there and look at the things and uh, do the things that they request of you. It works out for everybody. Um, <clears throat> you know, every time I do an episode, I say that plug differently. And you would think 120 eps in, I would have figured out how to do this, but I don't care. And you guys keep listening, so I'm good. Uh, today, I have brought on my dear, dear friend from the far, far north, uh, Adam Savadan, one of the, uh, res- like, I don't know, fun members of the, like, collective troupe of, uh, like, comedians from the magic space over in Loading Ready Run. And I don't know, he was just like, hey, can I come on your show? I'm like, yes, you can come on my show. Hell Yeah. So, uh, hey, Adam, thank you Hi. so much for joining me. Oh, this is great. Yeah, I wanted to do this. Like, I've been trying to keep busy. So I was like, <laughs> I need to do more stuff. And I was like, Shivam, I remember Shivam asking me to do casual magic at one point, and it just didn't work out. And so I was like, man, I should just get a hold of Shivam again. And you know what? Yeah. Open invitation. Literally, <laughs> I will I will do whatever you need to get you on the show. Yeah. Because <laughs> during the pandemic, this show has basically been my way of spending an hour or two with my friends and being able to talk Mm -hmm. because like, you know, during lockdown, when I started the show, we had like no way to talk to friends and I'm a hyper extrovert and I need my people. Mm -hmm. So being able to have a guaranteed hour long conversation with somebody was like the only way I kept my mental health up. And uh, that's so wild because like I'm, I felt like, I mean, the pandemic was rough for everyone, but I Mm -hmm. felt like I was the opposite. Like pre pandemic, I was like, I was like, I don't really like being around people that much. <laughs> and I like, it's ironic considering what I do for a living. Like I hate the camera. Like, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> I, I do. And it's just like, and then the pandemic happened and then I was alone all the time and I live alone. Like I have no pets, no partner, oh, nothing. Geez. I'm all alone. So, and the pandemic was rough and I definitely realized <laughs> yeah. that I was like, wow. I went like a whole, like a year, year and a half where I just kind of like, hung out alone we did like we lost the loading ready run office yeah which was the big thing because our office space was a place that i could go to that i always knew that there was a friend there and right. so i could show up get my like my thimble filled of social <laughs> contact and then leave and then i had like a place that i could just do it whenever i wanted and then sure. that got taken away and i was just like oh i oh <laughs> oh no yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean and think about that but for like millions of office workers and just people mm-hmm. whose social lives revolve around i go to work or i go to the thing i meet up with some folks i go home and i'm good yeah. i've gotten my interaction i've talked to other people mm-hmm. and for people like me who interaction is what i thrive on yeah be having just like my wife who is a very quiet and very like opposite of me person she's like super can control super patient and quiet and like relaxed and dedicated to her thing and it's awesome i love her we've been together 20 years but also she has heard every story i've had (laughs) ever and like my son is like a carbon copy of me but a child so he's just losing his mind all the time (laughs) two adhd people bouncing off each other while this poor woman is standing here makes her a real hard time when we're in a small little combined box and she's like tough two thirds of my family desperately need social interaction mm-hmm. and I can only give them so much. And so like this podcast basically gave me, she was like, I'm going to let you do this and go away for like, you know, once a week for an hour or two hours, whatever you need, mm-hmm. because I know that if I don't, you yeah. will burn the house down. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. What an angel, you know, <laughs> dude, I, I would be nothing, man. I would be, yeah. I'm deeply, deeply lucky mm-hmm. to have had one relationship and have it work out. Work out. Yeah. Oh man. That's so good. That's <laughs> wild though. I didn't actually, I didn't really think about like you as an extrovert, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I've met, I've met, but I've met you like a, like yeah. a bunch of times. Right. And I'm just like, it never really like, 
I don't know, maybe it's my fault as a human being, but I, when I look <laughs> at people, I'm like, I don't know how they are reacting to the pandemic unless they specifically tell me, right? Sure. And I just yeah. assume that everyone's like, it's the um, the social media curse where it's like mm. you see people yeah. and you see them doing things and you're like, oh, they're okay. You know what I mean? They're oh, doing yeah. fine. They're doing great. They're doing their thing, you know, but mm -hmm. you just never know. I mean, know it's and... exactly, it's like they show you the vacation to Tahiti, not the fact that they have to go to the grocery store, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's just f for me, especially because I'm a talker, because I need to have input and be able to share stories and things. Having this box to talk into and then having people like originally my show was actually going to be a mix of me doing solo, just like commander content and then like interviews once in a while. Mm -hmm. And then the lockdown happened and I was like, oh, no, it's just interviews now because otherwise I'm just going to lose my mind. Yeah. And it's been great because that means that now even I'm like 120 apps in and Oof. that's a lot of conversations with a lot of people. And it's been really just invigorating for me. That's you know, like, so sick. Oh man, that gets me so pumped up. Like when people <laughs> find their like their thing, their outlet, their whatever, right? you know, like their oh, thing yeah. that they just channel their whole soul into. Oh, I love know? it. I love oh, it so much. Man. Man. Yeah, that's great. I love that for you. Oh I, my God. I, Especially through something as hard as the pandemic, right? Yeah. And <laughs> like, I mean, that's a, a podcast though, at least is like, I'm, I can do this from my house. I can sit there with a microphone and my computer and we can make it work. And uh, I'm very lucky that people have uh, agreed with me and come along for the ride. Um, like, and that's why I'm always like, you know, the upside of this, is I always need content and I always have friends I want to talk to so I can make <laughs> the two work together. Yay. <laughs> yeah. And it hasn't at any point felt like, um, like, you know, you made your hobby, a I guess like it's not a hobby, yeah, no, but I mean like you did make it kind of a job, right? Like Yeah, I mean, well, part of that is because I've become unemployed over the past year, so I've had to make this into more of a job than my other thing. Yeah. But because it's literally just me talking to my friends about things I'd be talking to anyways, mm -hmm. that's made it less of a job and more of like a it it feels like like I used to be in journalism. Like I yeah. used to be in video game journalism, and part of it would be like I have to interview developers or I have to interview like you know, gamers or whatever, write down things. And then I would take these interviews and then I would transcribe them, turn them into an article. Mm -hmm. This feels like I'm skipping the work part. I'm doing yeah. the fun part, which is talk. And yeah. then I could, I mean, there are definitely days when I'm like, I really don't want to edit. I don't want to sit oh, here and stare yeah. at this stupid audacity for two hours oh. and like do this. And I've resisted doing things like putting this on YouTube. I, I pay a guy to go and uh, turn my stuff into YouTube do. content. Yeah. And it's, because i couldn't do it i'm like mm -hmm. i'm not going to and i should do things like stream or like you know monetize better or turn this into an actual thing that makes money but no i like yeah. having this as my outlet for me to chat with people i find interesting streaming is like such a roller coaster yeah can't say I, i'm the biggest fan of it you know you know that's part of the reason I wanted to have you on and not just because we're friends and I like you mm -hmm. and I think your hair looks awesome, by the way, it's <laughs> super envious of how cool it looks. Thanks. Um, it's also because you are one of the few people who I really, really enjoy watching who is the least happy doing this. And I don't mean, <laughs> and I don't mean that in like a negative way. I mean, just yeah. in the sense of like, cause like for instance, today as of recording, you did this awesome stream for uh, Planned Parenthood where you were playing the stupid Pokemon game yeah. where it's a Pokemon randomizer. Yeah. And I've seen you do that. And I've seen you do like, you know, your Minecraft, Minecraft roguelike run and all of just these other random games you play. Yeah. And half the time you're like, this is wild. And I love this. And half the time you're just like, I begrudgingly accept the chat has to be here <laughs> while I suffer through this next six hours of misery. Or whatever. Yeah. Well, it's more like, it's not so much that, but like, I mean, I have a bad habit of saying like, oh, this sucks, but I don't actually mean this sucks, right? Like, <laughs> yes, it's like, I know the feeling. Just, yeah, it's just like, <laughs> oh man, this game sucks, you know, but there's an inflection in your tone, but it's like, <laughs> I don't know, like these last like year of streaming or so has just been like incredibly hard in the mm. fact that like, it's kind of, it's just a big gamble. Yeah. You know? And mm -hmm. everybody knows that, right? Like, I know I'm, I'm not saying like, I am incredibly lucky to have what I have <laughs> because like a lot and a lot of people have that, you know? Yeah. And it's been like, if I, it's the hardest part 
is finding stuff that I am stoked to get to turn on the camera and start streaming and playing yeah. mm -hmm. because I am a creature that um, like really thrives off of like having a very focused goal. Yes. And if I can't, I can't just like play random games. Mm. Like I can't just like, I tried playing like, I tried playing like D Disco Elysium like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I saw that. That, that didn't look like it was your jam, man. No, and it was a good game. Like I, I didn't finish. I haven't even come close to finishing it, and it's fine. But it's like it doesn't, it doesn't excite you. It doesn't excite me, you know. And I don't have like a big thing to me is like the viewer experience and stuff. Like the Pokemon thing today was, if you're unaware, there's a um, you can basically get a randomizer for Pokemon. And yeah. there's a, a rule set that you can run, which is called Iron Mon. Yeah. <laughs> and we were playing Pokemon Fire Red. Yeah. Fire Red Kaizo Iron Mon. Yeah. Is... And you get one Pokemon and that's it. And everything's <laughs> everything's randomized. All the moves are randomized. The types of the Pokemon, like everything's randomized. And it's, it's so funny. Yeah. And like all the, like all the fights you're in are like, they're 50% higher level than they normally are. Yep. And uh, I don't know. I just like love stuff like that because it does seem very like, I don't know why, but most people look at it and be like, wow, that looks miserable. I hate that. You know? <laughs> and when I do it, I'm just like, oh, I get to like, I just get to sit here and just well, cause you do don't a have thing to... until I figure it out. Yeah, exactly. Like you don't have to go in with any, like a lot of Pokemon or whatever games you have to be like, oh, I know all the types. I know all the specific matchups. I know all the, no, in this, everything is random. You have no idea yeah. what they're going to throw at you. Like you had one where you were playing a water type that had drought. Drought yeah. is an ability that makes the sunshine. Now what that does is that makes water damage do half and fire damage do double. And then you were fighting against another water type that used an electric shot on you, which is like basically the weakness of water. So you've yeah. got like this weird just amalgamation of stuff that cannot happen in Pokemon yeah. and that you cannot plan for. But it was hilarious. It to me, that's like the same the watching these streams today gave me the same kind of thrill that I get from like a chaos draft in magic or from any kind of like randomizer like you know, rod of wonder in D and D type of thing <laughs> yeah. where it's just like, you like a deck know. of many things thing. Exactly. Like, yeah. <laughs> like you're flipping the card. Something yeah. was going to happen. Yeah. You have no idea what it is and whatever it's going to be is going to be delightful or maddening. Yeah. And that's like my favorite thing about gaming. Yeah. So like your stream today was just giving me so much joy to, or even watching you. Like, like I say, like keep going back to you playing Minecraft where I'm like, I know, you know, literally nothing about this. Nah, I didn't know and you were just brute forcing your way through one of the hardest games there is to learn. Yeah. And I was just like, this is so hilarious to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's such compelling yeah. content. <laughs> That's generally like my MO and like the, it kind of, I kind of made, I guess I made a name for myself in that mm. I started streaming. Um, this was like a couple of years ago. Have you ever played darkest dungeon? I have seen people play it. You've seen people play it. Okay. So in darkest dungeon, um, basically the way the game works is it's an RPG. It's like dungeon deliver. It's a roguelike. You get a roster mm. of heroes who all have different abilities mm. and there are a bunch of different mechanics, but one of the mechanics is uh, light level. And, I did a run in Darkest Dungeon where I played with uh, zero light level, which is Torchless, they call it. Huh. And when you play Torchless, um, you get more loot from like winning battles and stuff, but all of the enemies are like faster and they cause more stress damage, which is a big thing. And then they crit more, which causes mm. more stress damage. It's just, it's incredibly hard. And I did the Torchless, like the hardest difficulty on Torchless. And that run actually took me about six months <laughs> of doing that i did that run every day for six months until That's i got insane. it yeah and there was like some really good moments and i still i will die on the hill that i think darkest dungeon is the best streaming game of all time <laughs> and i don't think it's remotely close <laughs> like i could go on for hours about darkest dungeon and why it's just like this perfect video game I will have to go download it. It looks really cool. And it yeah. definitely looks like the sort of thing that I could get into. Um, I know because I've seen you, like, I think the first time I ever saw you streaming, you were playing I Want to Be the Boshi, mm, which is that old, yeah. like, side-scrolling game, yeah. which is just, like, miserable and, yeah. like, kills you on the screen. Because, like, the, it's, like, one of that genre of games based off of I Want to Be the Guy, which is made by my friend Kyan. And I was like, this 
that game was so messed up. And mm-hmm. every day I would watch you just like grind through another screen. Yeah. And suddenly there's like a, you know, three screen wide Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> spitting fire at you or something. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? Who even yeah. knows? I uh, I don't know. I just, I thrive <laughs> off stuff like that. Like, like that's give just... you an insane challenge and just force you to try to work. And it. it's not even like, yeah, like I know that there's like this stigma of like, you have to be a good gamer to be a streamer. <laughs> and it's like, I really don't think that's true, even though the things that I've done where that I've gained my most popularity was from doing hard things Hmm. like over and over again. But it's not that I don't think I'm necessarily that good. I'm just very stubborn. Yes. I think it's, I think it's less that you're good at the game because anybody can be good at a game, Mm -hmm. but it's the combination of your ability to perform, be authentic and be resilient. Because the thing that people like to watch about streams is Half of it is watching somebody really skilled do something really good. That's why people watch LSV play magic, right? Yeah. The other half of it is watching somebody who is not great, like brute force their way through something and comically fail. Yeah. And not just like, like, cause half the fun is watching someone like be like, cause you want to root for them. You're like, oh, come on. You almost got it this time. Next time we'll do it. Yeah. And it, it gives you this kind of like vicarious joy of being like able to watch somebody just kind of like work their way through something. Yeah, people love that. And it's oh, it's yeah. it's a shame that like the internet Twitch like Twitch culture in general is like <sighs> I've run into this problem a lot because backseating is a thing, right? Or like streamers getting help and like mm-hmm. my streaming style is that I will ask questions out loud but I don't really want the answer to them because I'm trying to figure it out in my yeah. head. And um you can definitely run into some problems where people because like people just like when they're watching a twitch stream they want to see you succeed right right and that's that's why they have this like desire to answer all the questions and they want to participate they yes. want to feel like they're they're getting to play along yeah and it's just a it's a tough line to walk that i've talked about a bunch of times on stream where it's like you i know you were trying to help but you need to realize too is that you essentially are just text on a screen with no tone and no like inflection and the streamer is going to read it based on their mood at the time. Mm -hmm. Right. So if I'm frustrated, I'm going to read your comment and I'm going to be like, well, why? Okay. Yeah, sure. I guess, you know, like, yes, please stop telling me how to do this. I'm pretty sure I can figure it out, you know, but at the same time there is, I don't think there's enough, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like onus on the streamers as well. Mm. Like we need to be realized that, you know, we need to realize like what mood we're in or like, and communicate yeah. properly. The fact that generally in the, their intention is to try to help you through a problem. Yeah. But at the same time, part of it is if you give me all the answers and we're done, then I have no stream. Yeah. Right. Like, great. Thanks. You, you played the game. Mm-hmm. Yay. Yeah. I was just a pick controller for your hands. Yeah. Right. Like it, <laughs> it, it feels like I watch a guy who's a very small streamer. He plays a lot of weirdo, like, old Russian arcade games and just like weird jank from the eighties and like mm. random adventure games that were on ColecoVision or something. Oh, those and have got to be awful. The, yeah. Basically it's like watching somebody play like the world's worst Kuso gays and that are just also hilarious. And <laughs> that you're never going to see anywhere else. Like, yeah. because this is a game from friggin' Siberia in 1984. And like, how did you find this? And why am I watching it? I don't know. But the trick is, is that like an adventure games that are from like the eighties and nineties, they have facts. They have full on like listed, like you can go through and find every step and do everything that'll do it. Mm-hmm. And they're all about solving the puzzle. And he's got this very strict rule. He's like, look, man, I don't want you to solve the puzzle for me. I know that you can find it. I know that the fact exists. Mm-hmm. Let me do this because otherwise this is not going to, there's no point. Yeah. There's no, anybody can just put in a text parser and just be like, look, here's the script. We're done. The yeah. fun is in me trying to figure it out. Right. Yeah, it's wild how like the joy of discovery has slowly kind of eroded over time. You That's know? one of the things that like I love watching streaming, but I've discovered that I don't want to watch you play a game I haven't seen before because mm-hmm. I want to be able to have that initial hit of like, ooh, look at me figure this out by myself. And then once like I've had a taste of it, then I'll sit and watch you and I'll be like, oh, OK, I get it now. Mm-hmm. Like the only game I haven't done that with is like with Minecraft. And that's because watching surge basically like minecraft is 
a horrible, Minecraft is impossible. Has a horrible onboarding process. It's got the world. It is <laughs> for the fact that it's the world's most popular video game. Yeah. It is literally the worst like to new player experience I've ever seen in a game in my mm-hmm. entire forty years of life of yeah. you know whatever playing video games. And I'm like, how do you expect my six year old son to figure this goddamn game out? There's no when way. I, the 40 yeah. year old who literally in the games industry can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, it's funny because when I was playing Minecraft, I also have played a lot of Path of Exile, mm. which is a action RPG by Grinding Gear Games. It's very popular. Well, it's like a Diablo like, right? It's a Diablo like, but it's like, it's notoriously complex. But mm. even then, I was like, I played Minecraft, and I was like, they tell you way more in Path of Exile than they do in Minecraft. Like Minecraft like, doesn't even tell you to punch things. They don't even like, tell you how to make a bed. <laughs> forget bed. They don't tell you how to walk. I mean, like, yeah. I would give a... I, I know some folks who work at Mojang, and I'm like, bro, I will give you money. Put a tutorial in the game, and you're like, nah, we could, or you could go to YouTube. and like... Jerks. Man, yeah, but, that's wild. Let's, Actually, there's one thing I wanted to bring up too before, like in the same line of like people yeah. wanting you to figure things out. When I was doing the Bosch, when I was playing I Want to Be the Boshi, uh, the Sonic fight is notoriously difficult. And <laughs> um, I did the Sonic fight for, I just like tried to figure it out for um, about, I think it was like 16 hours of total playtime <laughs> until I finally broke and I was like, okay. And nobody spoiled it for me, thankfully. But I got to the point where I was just like, okay, I, I just have to know, like, I can't do this anymore. And apparently there is a mechanic and I want to be the Boshi when you're fighting Sonic and Sonic is a character, like he's the gold Sonic flying around on the screen. Mm-hmm. And he is, there is an invisible tether between you <laughs> and Sonic and he's like a yo-yo. So oh, you, can, you for real? You can control where he goes. And I could, I did not even figure that out. Like it took uh, six, <laughs> 16 hours of dying over and over again on this boss. <laughs> and then finally I was just like, it, and then all Twitch chat had to say was like, he's a yo-yo. And I'm like, oh, and then it was just like, <laughs> I figured it out. And then like, I don't know, like maybe like four hours later he died. Yeah. I mean, knowing like, doesn't help you. In a yeah. <laughs> the game still hates you. <laughs> yeah. That game is incredible too. But I mean, like, I don't want to go too like, deep on it, yeah. but. That game is one of those games where it's like, it rewards you for having played games for a long time. Yes. You can't do that unless you've got a lot of years under you, because that game is brutal. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. But, like, I mean, I don't know. Like, I love watching you play Street Fighter. That fills oh. me with joy. Yeah. It's like one of my fa- it's one of my favorite games of all time, and it's yeah. just like, ah, this That's is That's something we've clean. never talked about, right? Like, our mutual yeah. love of fighting games. Like, Dude, seriously. Like, yeah. when I was talking to Wheeler the other day, just like, we were just chatting, and he was like, you didn't tell me you love Street Fighter. I'm like, dude, I would drop magic in a heartbeat for Street Fighter. <laughs> like yeah. Street Fighter. Okay, so check this out. Two days ago, my son was in our, we, I have a shed in my backyard, which is basically my gamer room. It's like where I put my magic cards and my board games and all my old consoles or whatever. And he was in there and he's like, Papa, what's this thing? It's called a Dreamcast. Oof. And he found my old Dreamcast and I had an old CRT in there. And I'm like, oh yeah, Dreamcast. I used to have this in college. We plug it in and he, he we're going through the games and he's trying like Sonic Adventure and he's trying like uh you know all these random things like oh Street Fighter you like Street Fighter right and I'm like yeah yeah I like Street Fighter and <laughs> yeah. he found my copy of Third Strike yeah. and he pops it in there and he's like all right let's play and I'm like crack my knuckles let's go <laughs> you're about to learn yeah <laughs> like, Mom, let me teach you what Papa did with his time for yeah. twenty years. That's so sick. I mean, fighting games are like a the sickest mental game. Like yeah. I learned, I learned mm-hmm. so much from playing fighting games that I transferred over to make this conversation at least tangentially uh, <laughs> relevant to magic, right? Like, yeah, I learned so much from playing. Oh my fighting god, games. it's one hundred percent. It's completely analogous. Yeah, it's because like you learn things like patience, footsies, learning to play your like to your outs, learning to yeah. play the reactions, and watching playing what the person, doing. not the not what's exactly. on exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. And you're like, oh, that person's got a tendency to jump every time right yeah. here. So what happens if I just do a DP right here? Yeah. It's like, oh, oh mm. man, street, I mean, street fighter and fighting games in general is just like, I had always loved watching them. I just mm-hmm. devoured like streams. I watch Evo every year. Yeah. Evo's a holiday in my house. Evo's a holiday. Yeah. <laughs> I used to like, I would just like, I don't really watch streams that much, mm-hmm. but 
like most big tournaments, I will literally just gremlin mode and just sit oh, yeah. there and not move for like three days and just mm. watch fighting games and Dude. Evo especially. And now that we've like kind of, I mean, we're not down, getting back to back. normal, but yeah, we're kind of getting back to normal, you know, and like Evo mm-hmm. is going to be back and not online and it's like going to be in person. Oh, it's going to be, like... for... I, I just want to see Taquito again. I want to see Daigo. Yeah, I want to see yeah. my boys play. Yeah. Dude, you know, I was at the first Better by the Bay and the second Better by the Bay. Really? The, the things that led up to Evo. Yeah. Like, because they the tournaments were held in Auburn and uh, they were up the street from my university. Yeah. Like, n- not like, I mean, like Wasn't a couple times away or whatever. The arcade there was like golf land or something? Yeah, there was, like, there was yeah. a couple of golf lands that they used to yeah. do them at. And like when I, because I grew up in uh, the Bay Area and Capcom was like local to me. Mm-hmm. So the arcade I used to go to, Sunnyvale Golf Land, is where they would do all the Street Fighter tests. Yeah. And so like the, but the, the first Evo, the first Evos were in Sacramento and I got to go see them and I didn't play because I was the scrub, but Dude, when you can see like an Alex Valle play live, you're just like, yeah. oh, I'm it's, never going to be there. But yeah, goddamn, it's magical. It's just like, oh, I don't know. I wish I could make everybody play fighting games just because like I mean, the things you don't you need learn. to be a fighting game player to understand why like Daigo Perry was so amazing, for instance. Mm-hmm. Right. Like I can't find a thing in magic that will make somebody go the way like showing a Daigo Perry would to anybody else, you know? No, there's nothing like that. That's, that's the tough part about magic, right? Like there's nothing yeah. like there. It's so hard and it's like incredibly difficult to parse from a spectator's point of view. Mm-hmm. And this is something I've been very passionate about where it's like, I think people should watch fighting games or even just watch magic or watch esports, find the thing you love and like really dive into it because like, I mean, it's just like sports, right? Mm-hmm. It's just like watching sports. Yeah. And um, there was, exactly old, there was an old YouTube show, the YouTube show I did for like three episodes, and I'm hoping to bring it back one day, which is literally called Spectator Mode. Where I, I loved it, man. I yeah, love that show. Where I go into like a game and I'm like, this is why you should watch it. I don't want you to play it, but I just want you to watch it. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping one day it comes back. I'm trying to work it, but things have been busy around here and there always seems to be a PPR happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing that's uh, wild, right? Like Magic has a new set every four weeks or something. And you're like, yeah. what the hell? Like, I don't even remember what's in this set like three sets ago. What are we doing now? Yeah. I mean... So yeah, I guess I guess we should drag it back a few steps and actually yeah. talk about who you are and why you're here. Yeah. Um so you're part of how did you get part of Loading Ready Run in the first place? Oh, I've known Loading Ready Run since they started. Hmm. I was there, like I lived here in Victoria. I grew up in Saskatchewan. Oh, in the middle of Canada. Middle of Canada. And uh I was living in a small ish town. It was big to me at the time, but <laughs> I grew up in like because my dad was a police officer. So we moved around a lot Mm. and I grew up in towns of like 500 people, like small, like very rural. My high school had more people than that. Yeah. My, like one of the school, the school that I went from grades four till nine in, uh, it was full on K to 12, 250 kids. (laughs) Yeah. I had gym classes that were bigger than that. Yeah. So it, it was small and like. My, uh, when we moved, we moved way up north in Saskatchewan to a town called La Ronge, which is, um, very far north, like pretty close to the border of the Northwest territories. And I lived there for about from grades 10 to 12. And my graduating class was 41 people. And that was the biggest class. Yeah. That was the biggest class we had ever had at that point. Jesus. So I graduated in Saskatchewan and I was like, man, I do not want to be stuck in Saskatchewan my entire life, you know, no, because you kind of really don't No, And I hate snow. Like I despise snow. I hate winter. That's a weird thing for a Canadian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I hate snow. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. And I was like, I need to get away. So my mom had gone to university super late when she was in her like mid forties. Oh, and she geez. did went to UVic. Hmm. And she's like, well, um, she was living in Victoria at the time. And she's like, well, why don't you come out here and you can stay with me for a little bit and then get your feet under you and then live here for a bit. It's nice. No snow, you know? Yeah. So then I packed up over there. Yeah. I packed up all my stuff into a little duffel bag. I had nothing. And then I moved out to Victoria and then I didn't know anybody. And uh, my mom ended up getting a job as a social worker in England. And she left. 
what? <laughs> so she's like, I got to, I'm like, I'm going right. Like I'm, I got a job in England and you're like, do you want to come? And I was like, no, I'm good. I'll stay. So then I stayed in Victoria and I didn't know anybody by this yourself. Like, How I'm, old were you? Uh, I was like, just turned 18. So you're just like off in a random part of Canada by yourself. Your yeah. mom is like 8,000 miles away on the other yeah. side of the ocean. Your dad is in the middle of Canada somewhere. Yeah. And you're just like me in a duffel bag on this <laughs> island. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. GG's. <laughs> and like, I didn't meet anybody for the longest time. And then I ran into, um, I ended up meeting our, have you ever met, I don't guess you probably haven't met all the lure people, but if you've ever met Ash Vickers. No. Okay. Well, she was a member of loading kind of like a, side like a sure. friend of ours but like she was like the within the circle she, she was a, within the circle and she was the introduction to me to this friend group who was like graham and bill and um james and matt and like everybody and then i met all of them and then james and i started living together and huh. james and i james and i lived together for like 10 years Oh, geez. <laughs> oh, yeah. We were like, yeah, it was like there was like a couple like rotating roommates in the place that we had. But it was like me and James and his now wife, Ashley. Um, and then like a rotating fourth roommate who just kind of changed That's every few wild, months. Man. Yeah. And I lived with them time. forever. And then, yeah. And then James and Ashley got married and they decided that they that I had to be on my own. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, yeah, that yeah. that's a... Yeah. That is kind of one of those times when you're like, okay, now we get private time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I'm right here, guys. It's fine. I'll so, just be on the couch. You guys go enjoy. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll be good. I'll be quiet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they, they got married and I had to go on my own, but that's how I met that friend group is like, and then they had started doing loading ready run stuff and I had no interest in doing it. I was just like, no, I'm yeah, you don't it, strike right? me as a, an improv comedian, which is weird because I did improv in high school. Like I did of improv. Course you did. Everybody yeah. in that goddamn group did. I did improv. <laughs> I did a lot of drama. Like I used to go to like our my high school had an improv team, and we would go to like per, there was like provincial competitions that we would go to, and stuff. So well, I, that explains why you know how to do screening. Yeah, you've yeah, got performance I mean, chops, man. Yeah, like, I do have some. It's funny because Josh Lee Kwai the other day was saying like, people keep asking me what's the most important thing. And they're like, oh, I want to know about your mics and your camera. So he's like, no, none of that matters. Yeah. What matters is your ability to actually perform on camera and not look like a goofball. Yes. Or if you're doing that, do it on purpose. Yeah. Right. Like control that you look like a goofball. Yeah. My big like, thing is like, I try to be as, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Authentic as possible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, you and Cam are like the straight men for that group. It feels like sometimes mm -hmm. like the ones that the jokes pivot around and that, that works really well, given your personality and kind of like your tempo and tone. And it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. I yeah. really enjoy watching you on things. Yeah. So I, uh, okay. And then a few years, I worked at, I got a job at like, uh, I worked at a, uh, file storage company. Hmm. And they did like high security uh, media storage, mainly for the government. And <laughs> it, cause everything's in paper, right? You can't like, you sure. can't digital, you can't digitize everything because there needs to be like physical so, documents. Right. So I worked in like this facility. It was like big warehouses. Oh, so like by file storage, you mean like papers in like envelopes boxes yes in oh, boxes Jesus. in like That's big a, warehouses oh, and like the, they'd be like a hundred feet tall of shelves, you know, like files in them and i worked there forever i worked there for 18 years what the hell yeah i worked at that job for 18 years of my life from like i was basically from 19 until yeah like 30 no at that point aren't you just running the show <laughs> like close you're just, 18 years you're the boss man like i was i was close like when i left but i was just by the end of it i was so miserable like i basically ran the shipping department so it's like anything that like left the facility i mm. was like i decided sure. what went and how it got there etc cetera, etc cetera. and then eventually i was just like i had already just started i had been doing my, a weekly stream for loading ready run on saturdays and that's mm. how i got my start is like i was like i was like i think i want to try streaming and james is like yeah you should and uh i was like does lure have any like because i know lure has like this was back when lure had the uh individual shows like everybody had yeah. their own show and uh, i was like for those of there... you who aren't familiar loading ready run is more like a, a television channel than any yes. individual stream yeah it's like they've got scheduled shows at scheduled times 
different people come on, do their thing, and then you can just know, like clockwork, this show is always going to be at this slot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I was like, can I do alert, like something loading, ready, run related? And James is like, yeah, I'll ask Graham. And then I they ask Graham, and they're like, yeah, sure, of course. So Saturdays in like June of 2014, I started going in every Saturday. I was still working full time at my old job. Hmm. And I just went in every Saturday and just played whatever I wanted, really. And uh, <laughs> a lot of the big things that people seem to gravitate towards was I played a lot of Souls games. Mm. And then I played uh, Dark Cloud 2. Dark the big Cloud. One. I love Dark Cloud 2. I, can I haven't go thought on. about that game in a minute. Dark Cloud 2 has one of the best mini games ever created. It's called Svita. And basically what the game does is like you clear out a it's like a dungeon delver so you clear out a level and then once you clear out the level you get to play golf in it <laughs> yes it's awesome it's so good and there's like a portal there's like a portal that's either red or blue and it puts it in a random spot and it puts the ball in a random spot and it gives you a certain number of shots between like one and eight or something like that and then the ball uh, every time it bounces off a, a, a like a surface, it changes colors from red to blue, and you have mm. to get the ball into the into the portal. But it has to be the opposite color that the portal is. So if the portal's blue, the ball has to be red. Yeah. So dark cloud. Okay, I get it. Yeah. Uh, the the recording software decided that we didn't want to go on that tangent. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So you were streaming dark cloud. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, th I haven't thought about that game in a long time, but incredible game. Yeah. That's love cool. it to death. Yeah. So then I did that weekly stream and then eventually I was like, well, I don't really like working at my job. I'm miserable. <laughs> and so I was like, Graham, is there anything? And I had been doing, I started doing sidewalk slam, mm, the wrestling which is, podcast, which is a wrestling podcast with Graham, which got very popular and well, yeah. So, at uh, we, we're doing that for a while. So I was doing my Saturday stream and then sidewalk slam. And then I was like, Graham, is there anything else I could do? And there's like, yeah, I'm sure we could find lots of other work for you if you want to like take the dive. So I was like, screw it. So I quit my job and I started kind of like streaming full time, which didn't, wasn't the best idea, you know, in hindsight, <laughs> right? Like the dive from like, cause I had been streaming. I did like the 365 day stream thing where I streamed That's every day. Lot. Yeah. So I was working full time and I streamed every day from home. Yeah, it's hard to get what, a life in there, man. I don't, yeah, I didn't have much of a life. It was just for a year, it was nine to five. And then from six till nine, I streamed from home and that was it. So I uh, started working for Lure like on contract. Hmm. So then any stream I did, I just tried to take in as much as I could. You know, like I did every stream sure. I could and then got paid that way. And then eventually I got, I'm currently part time with them. So I'm on a contract, which is nice. Um, Good. And that's basically how I ended up there. Just did you, when did you get in on magic? Cause I know Ooh. you've been a long part of like doing magic stuff with them. Yeah. Magic. Uh, I remember playing when I was a kid, like I had two like ice age starter decks, hmm. but, uh, nobody played like nobody I knew played and nobody I knew how to play. So I played by myself a lot. <laughs> I did that one. And, uh, I, did that and then I stopped playing because nobody I knew played. And then when I it got to like M11, I think it was M11 was when mm. James was like, you should come to a pre-release with us. And I was like, I mean, I guess I'll try it. <laughs> sure, I have no idea how to play. I have no <laughs> idea. And I remember opening my M11 pre-release kit and I was like, what is this? It was <laughs> it was Big Gideon. Remember <laughs> Five Mana Gideon? Mm -hmm. That absolute Chad. Yeah, that card was <laughs> messed up. And I so good that card. Yeah, man. I opened Gideon and Frost Titan. Oh my god! In my pool, and yeah, I just that's like, do it. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I won many games, but I was like, all right, I'm hooked. You know, like that yeah. was just it. You know, damn dude, that's a good pool though. Yeah, it was a really good pool. <laughs> it's like you know when you get those pools and you look back and you're like. Man, I wish I could go back in time and play it again, like, you know? <laughs> right? I mean, dude, yeah. I was just thinking about, somebody told me that this week or whatever is the anniversary of Avacyn Restored coming out. Mm -hmm. And I remembered Avacyn Restored is like one of the first pre-releases I'd come back to and I didn't really understand Magic. In my pool, I had a Grizzle brand and Ooh. I didn't use it because I was like, 
why would I pay seven life for a card? Oh, that seems dumb. No. <laughs> and now I'm just sitting there going like, what the <laughs> hell am I doing? Like, how do you not have a, if you have a grizzle brand, you've changed your whole pool to make it work. Whatever yes, you gotta do. You do. If it's grizzle just... brand in 39 swamps, you go, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, you just jam. Yeah. Like, don't be an idiot. Uh, yeah. It's, it's funny. Like when you look back and you're like, cause so I had been away from magic for a long time. And my friend brought me back for uh, a draft of rise of the Eldrazi. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'd never drafted before. And I kind of knew cause I'd read articles or something. So I'm just sitting there and cracking it open. The first crack, uh, the first rare I got was Sarkin the mad, mm-hmm. which is a weird planeswalker. The one that only goes down. Yeah. And I'm just like, what the hell is, and I thought planeswalkers <laughs> had summoning sickness and I thought so I wasn't <laughs> using it. And I was like, I don't understand what this is supposed to do. Yeah. And now I look back, I'm like, I had a God tier pool. Yeah. What was I man yeah what do you do when you're like it's so good when you're new though right like that's the experiences that we all love right yeah and it's like luckily i got turned on to limited resources really early Mm. into me playing magic so i mean i've (laughs) always enjoyed limited like i love drafting so much draft is just that is limited resources turned me into like a limited fan yeah like i love sealed i love i mean i'm known as a commander guy Mm -hmm. but like my heart is in sealed pools and my heart's in chaos drafts and in like, cause it's a small puzzle you have to solve and it's different yeah. every time. It's, it's exactly like time. we were talking about earlier, like the Pokemon runs or whatever. It's like when I play limited, my pool is going to be complete. Like whatever I learned before, it's all going to be basically brand new this time around. These colors are different. The cards are different. God mm. knows what's going to happen. Part and, of the uh, thing. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. No, part that's what the, makes it hella fun, dude. Part of the thing I love too about limited is like making the garbage work. Yes. You know? Yes. You just get like a bunch of like your pool's not very good. And then you're just like, all right, it's time to it's time to play this deck, you know? Yeah, you're like, that's, okay, well, these are the cards I got. Make yeah, them work. This is it. I gotta make it work, right? And I don't know. There's just something very beautiful about that. Yeah, I mean, but one I, of my favorite things I did over pandemic, which is a rich man's game that only real content creators who've got a ton of boxes can do mm-hmm. is that Brian David Marshall and Sheldon Mennery decided they wanted to do a thing called boxing league where what they did was they would crack a full box of cards and build a commander deck out of just what was in that. And mm-hmm. every week or two weeks we would get a booster pack and add it in there. Yeah. So it was like playing like super sealed basically. And you're mm-hmm. like, well, if this box is good, then I'm good to go. Otherwise, yeah. I hope I have a legend. Let's go. I just think like, yeah, your average power level would be through the roof. Right? Oh, yeah. like I, I've never done like a full box sealed before. You would think so, but it's still, because it's a singleton format, mm-hmm. you're still limited yeah. to right. what you've got. Yeah. So even if you've got like bombs all day long, if you crack four Gideons, you can only use one still. Mm-hmm. So like, you're still going to have a lot of just random trash rares and not trash rares, but like, junky like two threes for three that come in and fly or whatever right like yeah that's my favorite I need to, it's, it's basically playing super limited right yeah, it's like I super lo- sealed i love like four mana three fours and that's it that's all they do it's like that's it's my like, favorite look, way to play i'm here to like i like for blocking me, a, a two <laughs> mana three one is like mm, that's what oh, i want yeah. <laughs> like just give me give me claws and let's just go yeah like, i don't need I don't yeah. ask for a lot. I just want to turn sideways. My favorite way to play magic is I block and I like trading and I like grinding people out. That's like <laughs> my, I love yeah, like, like just creature based. Like give you know. me the red zone, man. I don't want no spells or nothing. I just want to turn my guy sideways and I feel good about my life. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, yeah, I started doing pre-releases and stuff and going to those like every time they were out. And then this was like, I still didn't do like, like I did like a few cameos and like lure stuff like Friday nights and, Mm. everything else but i didn't really start until i got my like until i i didn't really get into friday nights until no i did it before i got my contract so like i started doing friday nights and stuff and that was Mm. cool i got a taste of like contributing to like a project and doing like an actual show and a thing doing a show and a thing and getting to like play a a, essentially a character like it's kind of me right like the the yeah. characters that you see on screen it's like it's like wrestling it's, where it's like yeah, it's exaggerated you it's our personalities kind of cranked up to 11 or cranked down you know and my character on friday nights was definitely cranked down where i was like i played the character that it was like the audience insert kind of like you're all you're all weird <laughs> you know like why are you being so weird about this so i don't know i don't know like and so 
now that I've got to start doing like the pre pre releases and stuff too, like that's fun because it's just more limited that I get to play. Yeah. And you have the upside of not having any information. Yes. Like you got to just crack the packs and it's like, well, there's no limited resources for me to listen to to tell me what to do with this card. So let's go. Yeah. You just get to grip it and rip it, which is my favorite. Like, oh man, there's something so liberating about that, which I think that not a lot of people take the time mm. to like enjoy it you know i mean that's the thing like when i got to do a ppr the thing i got to enjoy the most was that it was just felt like good clean like old-fashioned like even though i'm a content creator deeply invested in everything Mm -hmm. it still felt like i was just like oh i'm opening a pack and i've got no idea what's coming and i don't know what's in your deck so let's just see what happens and what's even in this set who knows it was fun yeah. It was like, oh my god, this is what it used to be like before I had to know everything. Yeah, the best <laughs> the best thing about new magic sets is like realizing or trying just trying stuff out, and even if you yeah. lose, like it's okay. I mean, I'm exactly. just cycle back to Street Fighter where it's like I, learning how to lose is such so important. Oh yeah, and I know that magic players have probably learned that, but some people haven't, right? And it's just like you learn my, a lot more from your losses than your wins. Yes. You do. And it's like my my mantra the last, like, I don't know, year of my life has just been GG go next. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you lose, you're like, sick. Okay. Put your quarterback up and let's go. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> just GG go next. You know, just, you just keep trying. And I know that it's hard to say for magic too, because a lot of people are like, I can't afford to do multiple drafts a week. I get one yeah. a week. Right. And it's like, that's tough. I don't have any good advice for you. Right. Yeah. No, it's, it, like, it's, it's, that's a challenge that I run into a lot because. I'm like, look, I get it. You got like one deck. You got your one commander deck you invested in and it didn't work out for you. Uh Uh-oh, now what do we do? And Mm -hmm. that's a real problem. Magic is an expensive hobby and it's hard to tell someone that like, oh, you should have like six decks and just rotate. I'm like, that's like some first world nonsense that like, it's hard for me to even just justify, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's it's part of the problem that comes along with being on like this luxury game we play is like sometimes you got to like, there are ways to simulate drafts and there are ways to simulate teal pools. And sometimes you just got to go play cockatrice until you figure it out. Right. Like, yeah. But yeah, like one thing though, that I am curious about, and mm-hmm. this is maybe more serious than just like fun timey game stuff is like, you've been saying you live by yourself yes. and even the most introverted introvert is still going to want to have someone to talk to once in a while and on occasion. And like streaming is while the audience is there, there's still just text on the screen Mm -hmm. and it still kind of doesn't feel real all the time. Right. Like it's got this weird kind of like layer of abstraction. Mm -hmm. Like you recognize usernames, you recognize people, but the interaction is you're talking and they're writing back to you. And it's gotta be, and like when you're sitting there jamming a game, like I don't know how people play the same game over and over for like ever. Like Mm -hmm. you pick one game and that's the only thing you stream for all day. I don't understand how they do that without like going crazy. Yeah. But how do you like, and I know you've been very open about like dealing with the fact that this is a big drain on your mental health. This is a Mm -hmm. big drain on like, how do you keep doing this? And so I'm just curious, what have you learned about yourself or how have you tried to figure out how to handle the, this weird isolation that comes along with what we do? Um, it's been tough, right? Like I think, In the last, like, I would say, like, in the last six months, I've realized that while a lot of my social interaction because of the pandemic has come from streaming and it is just text on a screen, Mm. it is still an outlet for me to actually say things out loud that I'm feeling. Mm. You know, if I'm having a bad day, I just tell people, right? Like, I'm just Mm going to be honest with you. Like, I'm people are like, how's it going? And I'll just, you know, like, there's that normal human reaction where you ask somebody, how they're Without doing, but you don't, answer. you don't really want to know the answer. You know what I mm. mean? Like you just ask it because it's polite. Yeah. But most times when people are, when I come into my stream and they're just like, Oh, how are you doing today? And I'm like, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I feel terrible. Like I'm not doing well mentally or physically. And it's just like, I don't know. It's tough. Like I, I really, I realize that I was getting more meaningful interaction out of like using streaming as a outlet, which I understand that not a lot of people can use this to the same advantage because they don't stream or they just don't I mean, want look, to. You've got the, the bump of being a known person 
which means you get an audience like kind of by default, which is yes. You which gotta is use incredibly it, lucky. Like, yeah. So, it's lucky, but it's also like if that's a resource you've got, you use it. Yeah. So I've used streaming as like I essentially get to get talk how I feel, you know? And I get mm. to say it's kind of I mean, it's I don't want to say it's like therapy, but I mean that's the closest like I mean, like, sometimes you just need to say thing to make it happen, like to make it real, right? Like, yeah. Sometimes you need to. It's not like therapy. I mean, therapy is different. Therapy yes. is like you're talking to somebody and they've got a guided answer and solution for you. Mm -hmm. This is more like sometimes you just need to verbalize something yeah. in order to be able to piece it together. Yeah, process like, it. Yeah, yeah. you're like, like by I, saying you take shape of it. Right? Yeah, because I did like I did like seven years of like clinical th like yeah. actual therapy like i would go and i went every yeah i went and talked to a person every week for seven years and i finally like like i get they call it graduating because mm -hmm. you're never really done right? Yeah, right but there just there just became a point where like I, I remember this with crystal clarity where my therapist and i were just talking about books for like four weeks and she's like I think you're done, <laughs> you know, like you're not, you're not cured. Right. Like, and yeah, even well, then my depression was always on the clinical scale, very mild, right? Like mm. I didn't have anything. I had a lot of anxiety, but that was that, I guess that batches in with it, but that was always the worst part of it. But like clinically my depression diagnosis was mild. Right. Mm. But it's yeah, still like, like not a lot of people go at all. Yeah. Right. And two of the biggest things I learned from therapy was that 25% of the population has a treatable mental illness, like 25%, like that's a big mm -hmm. number 20. Like, so whenever you feel alone or like, you're like, I'm the only one that feels this way. It's like, that's not true. 25%, yeah. one in four people. And the other thing was my, the thing that my therapist always kind of like, um, said to me was that you have to be uncomfortable enough to make a change. Mm -hmm. And there just, it becomes a point where in your life that you're just like, I'm sick and tired of feeling like this, Yeah, you know, and you just got to make, and I understand that certain countries you can't, you don't have ready access. Like I am again, lucky. I just rolled the dice. I was born in Canada, right. <laughs> Where I can just like go to a place and with Canada, it's easy because you just, I literally like called mental health services and was just like, Hey, I, I, I'm having, I'm struggling. They're like, all right, we'll set you up with somebody. And that That's was literally awesome. it. Yeah, that, that was it. So lucky. And I got into a therapist and I, uh, you know, like, it's just like, that was it. And I yeah, was I like, mean, and even if you get in clicking with a therapist is hard. Yeah. Finding a therapist you gel with, finding somebody who can speak to your language. It is difficult. And like, I deal with this a lot because uh, in my role as clergy, I end up talking to a lot of people mm -hmm. who need therapy, but can't afford it. Or for cultural reasons, this is not going to work for them or linguistic reasons like my mom and dad both would be much better if they were able to go to therapy, but yeah. they're all of our parents, Indians, like, yeah, yeah, right. Like that whole generation, yeah, that whole generation, that whole far generation off. could really, really use just yeah. somebody to talk to. Yeah. But like my dad talks in English, like he's going to get on a plane tomorrow to come to America and not like he's been here for 45 years. Yeah. And my mom is just not going to, she's like, that's not the, the jam she's going to do. But the thing is, it's like, just being able to talk to somebody yeah. is so important. And just like even verbalizing and figuring out like, oh, I don't feel good. Mm -hmm. And then, cause once you can say that and believe it, then you can work on what do we do about this? Yes. But like, for instance, my depression is entirely situational based. Mm -hmm. Like I get super depressed sometimes, but it's also like, oh, it's also because I don't have a job or, oh, because you know, I'm struggling in some other life thing. Like it took a while for me to figure out that I'm not clinically depressed. I just have ADHD and sadness on occasion. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's like, everybody gets sad sometimes, Yeah, but that doesn't, it doesn't take away from people who are depressed. It doesn't take away from just me being sad. Yeah. It's but, funny though. Like you mentioned that, like you got to find somebody that you click with and this is my mm -hmm. own experience. But like when I first went to my therapist, I, uh, this is my total personality where I didn't like it but I kept going because I'm so stubborn. <laughs> so for like the first two years, we, me and my therapist talked about this where the first two years that I went, I literally said nothing for like the hour that I was there. That didn't seem good. No, but we stuck with it. Right. Like I kept showing up and she was like, it was like pulling teeth, like trying to get stuff out of me and getting me to talk about this stuff. But I'm just so stubborn that I was like, I'm tired of feeling like this. So I'm just going to keep going until something happens. 
you know? And then finally it just like, I got comfortable or I just decided that now was the time to talk. And it's like, I understand that you like, I get what people are saying when they're like, Oh, you got to find someone that you click with. And, but there is a time that I think you need to make a decision where it's like, do I click with it is like, am I just looking for an excuse where like, I feel like I just like everyone says like, Oh, you just didn't click with them. Or am I actually putting in the work? Mm. Right. And that's there my big that. thing. It's like, there is that. And I, again, I'm not saying like you're lying or like you're making no. things up or, but I just think that there is a point where you just need to like, you do need to just, yeah. You sometimes try. you really do like, yeah, that's exactly it. Like yeah. there's, there's clicking. And then there's also like, are you like, if you're not holding up your rope, then no matter who they are, it's not going to work. Yeah. They're not like, going to do if anything. You're, if you're yeah. just going because you're just, I don't know. But I mean, it's, it's a thing like, you know, if you can't help somebody who doesn't want to be helped yes. and if you're not motivated to work on this, then you could have like the Dalai Lama as your therapist and you're still going to be just kind of like, wow, well, that there's didn't there's work. Help. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's so tough. I wish there was a clean answer. You there know? isn't. There's, if, I wish humanity that, yeah. has created religions on trying to find a clean answer. Yeah. <laughs> Like, it's like, man, I wish there was, I wish I could just give someone a clean answer where it's like, you just need to do this and everything's going to be great and you'll be happy. Yeah. Like sometimes I just look back at what the Buddha was doing, you know, he's like, this dude's answer to life sucks is okay. Well just get rid of everything you own and move to the woods. Yeah. It's like, that's the only way out is just screw all yeah, this crap yeah. and just leave it alone. If you don't have just anything, you won't away. want anything. We'll be good to go. And yeah. I'm like, Hmm, that works when there's like, a hundred thousand people that live in the world. It's not quite so easy when there's 7 billion. Yeah, no, it's not the same. And it's just like, man, mental health is something that I'm like super, like very passionate about. And especially being vocal as, as men, like males yeah. are generally not very vocal about it. And like, I will tell people like, I'm just like, I feel like crap today or like. It's important. You know? It's important. To, I mean, I hate this thing about like, you know, like naturalize it or what's the word I'm looking for. Just like, um, you know, make it okay to be talking about that. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But also it's important to just be able to sit there and say like, yo, you know what? I'm not feeling good today. Can we take a rain check and come back? And I'm like, okay, that's fine. Let's... It's it's good to at least communi open communication, yeah. which is hard for a lot of people to do. Yeah. Especially now it is now that we live all text-based is <laughs> the, such a vital part of just, if you tell me how you're feeling, then I can help or hurt or not, I not heard I can help or I can adjust myself to make it better for you. Yeah. If I don't know how you're feeling, I can't. Yeah. There's like, yeah. there's just so much like stigma, stigma just to like keep everything like to yourself. Yeah. It's you like so dumb. And it's like, okay, individualistic man, like there, we're in this together. there is like a, there is a problem. Like there could be a problem with oversharing. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, there is a limit, yes. right? Like, there, there's definitely there's, like a, you don't need to know yeah, how I'm feeling about everything. everything. Yeah. It's <laughs> like when I tell people how I'm feeling, like if I'm having a bad day or if I'm just bad mental, like, you know what I mean? I'll just tell people. Yeah. And generally that seems to be like, Oh, okay. Nobody like shout outs to, like, to like, it's a big thing with like loading ready run where they have been so cool. And it's a mirror. It's actually, I was thinking about this a couple of days ago where it's a miracle that that company survives because <laughs> we're all friends. Yeah. And there's money involved. That's like, I've worked with my best friend. He's not my best friend anymore. Yeah. Like, no, did, you don't work with your friends. That's not no. how it works. And like, and yet you have just a crew yeah. of people that like each other. And yeah, I don't know how it works, but oh, uh, everyone I work with is a gem and I am blessed for knowing every one like, of them. Every now and then I'll just ping Graham and be like, do you have an HR department? Who does your payroll? How do you handle this? Yeah. And I'm like, how do you work? How do you have a company? Like yeah. an honest to God, like company with employees that are just literally your crew of people. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't get it. Like, I don't understand friends. how that works. I don't know. I don't know either, Shivam. Like I've been asking <laughs> the same questions. I was just like, I don't get this. Like we should all hate each other. Yeah. Like there's no way yeah. that like you should be able to just get away with what you're doing. Yeah. And yet, and yet it's, it a, works. And I think it's the, it's the, probably the best it's ever been, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm biased. I love LR. I love all of you guys. I'm a big fan of all the content. Yeah. And so it's one of those things where I'm like, damn, that is like living the dream. And you get to live on a freaking Island with the ocean right there. And it's yeah, like, okay, it's this pretty is sick. Cheating. <laughs> you, guys are, 
you guys are cheating. You've code. obviously hacked the system. Yeah, the uh, ocean's <laughs> literally three blocks from my house. To be fair, the ocean's like three blocks from my house. Yeah, too, so it's not that bad. <laughs> However, you got like when I was in Victoria and I could look down the street and see the bay and the things, and I could hear like it felt like being in an old Italian movie or something. You can hear the accordion <laughs> in the distance. Yeah. You're like, what is this crap? It's a dude on a boat. An anime. Was... Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's so dumb. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, how do you get lucky enough to have somebody like Surge hanging out with you all the time? Yeah, or like I don't know. Wheeler, you know, yeah. like, dude, there's Wheeler, cool Surge, people. Ben, Graham, Kathleen, Corey, God, I love the Heather, entire group. Yeah. Beach, Ian. Like, I don't know. I don't. It's, I could go off for hours about all of them just because, like, they have given me more than i can possibly imagine and i'm sure they'd say the same about me right like well yeah because you're canadian you're all nice to each other other, but it's like i I don't know i don't think i've ever i try to tell them every now and again it's like hey i really like do appreciate you you know like james turner is like the best friend i have ever had you know like james and i james and i have known each other for about 20 plus years that's insane and James and I have like rarely ever fought, you know, like we've had some disagreements, but like never, like never an argument. I don't think, you know, it's funny. It's like when I first met James in person and stuff, I mean, I met a, a bunch, obviously I was like, man, he's cold and he hates yeah, me. And I don't get this. Yeah. He, he's just super mean. Like yeah. what did I do? Am I okay? And I realized I'm like, no, it's no. the PPR. He's yeah. literally the busiest man on the island yeah. and he does not have time to smile right now. We could be friends later. She, and I was like, oh, man. he's on the clock. I'll people, come back. People <laughs> react like that to James all the time. <laughs> yeah, he gets that all the time. People and I'm like, no, he's, he's like, it's not that he's a jerk. He's just busy. It's they just think he's like a statue show. from Easter Island or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> like they're just like, he's just a big head with a nose and that's it, you know? And I will say this randomly. It was wild because I was there at the PPR. You were there. Graham is there. Marshall Sutcliffe is there. You guys are all standing and talking to each other. And I'm coming, walking from a distance. I'm like, oh, look, it's all my friends. And I walk up and I'm like waist height to all three of them. We're all big. And I'm like, I'm not a short person, but what the hell is going on up there? Which is funny because like when when we first started going to conventions or when I started going to conventions with Loading Ready Run. How weird is that, by the way? Very strange because like, First, when people meet me, they anytime they ever see me is I'm sitting down Mm. and I'm like all leg, you know, like I'm very leg, leg heavy, you know, and I would stand up and people like, holy crap. (laughs) It's like I'm six five. Like I'm a I'm a big boy, you know, and it's just like at first it was very (laughs) weird because people know who you are, but you don't know who they are. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's a very jarring experience where they're just like, "Hey, Adam, how's it going?" I was like, "I don't know who you are. Like, you got to you got to help me out here. You know what I mean? Like, they'll talk to you. Like, yeah, seriously. Like saying things, and I was like, I'm cool with that. Like, that's fine. I'm not trying to dis- disparage it, but it's like you need to like at least say like, "Hey, I'm so like even if you got a Twitch name or something, or even just your yeah. name, you know, just give me yeah. something to work off of." But <laughs> it's just like it was very strange. It was so weird because all of my friends were so used to it because they had been doing, I think I came into Loading Ready Run like 10 years Halfway in. Halfway through. 10 years, I think. Mm. Maybe a little bit shorter than that. And it was just like this bizarre experience. I was like, I don't know how to handle this, you know, as someone who like thought that he didn't like a lot of social contact, which cons do burn me out, but they burn everybody out, right? Cons are i mean some people thrive i don't know man every time (laughs) when i came home from like okay so i went to gp not gp vegas i was in between the two covids that happened last year Mm -hmm. and when i came back i was floating in like ecstasy for like a week and a half off of the buzz i got from that show so i get the cards are hard for a lot of people but i am not one of them i miss gp vegas i want to go back oh my god dude it was the most fun yeah oh god i'm so I, I realize COVID's not over. It's still dangerous. Yeah. We should still be masked, and yeah. I'm going to be masked. But I'm also going to be at two command zones, I mean, two command fest this summer. So that's going to be rad. Man, I might try to get to one of these this year, dude. I'm telling you, Maybe Richmond is going to be like the hot, the hottest show in town. It's mm-hmm. ridiculous how many people are going to be there. Hmm. And but when's Richmond? That's uh, the week after first weekend of June, maybe. Mm-hmm. Very soon, it seems like. Oh my okay. God, that's very soon. Oh yeah, it's May. But, <laughs> yeah, like I'm going to that and I'm going to uh, Orlando, which is in July. 
and that's gonna because like that's my cool stuff or whatever and that's very far away but at the same time i'm like uh it's gonna be rad all my friends are gonna be there yeah um you might find it easier to go to bellevue <laughs> which Probably, is like yeah. down the street you yeah know? it's pretty close um yeah man i don't know uh it's it's just it's been really just enjoyable to watch you stream and watch you like kind of grow as a like because before you were definitely much more reserved you're much quieter and you've definitely opened up a lot more over the past year or two mm -hmm. and you and i'm not saying you have to because obviously there's about 400 randos watching you it's yeah. weird to talk about like my oatmeal made me sad today or like you know <laughs> i, Man, I don't know lot, if i'm yeah. attracted to people anymore you know whatever it's yeah. like these are things that are like you know it's weird but at the same time being able to understand yourself, even it, it's like the same reason we used to use diaries or live journals or yeah. things we write them down. It's just like being able to verbalize and understand who you are is just such a growing moment. Mm -hmm. And it's from, from my perspective as a person who deals with, you know, human interaction a lot, I've just really enjoyed watching you find your happiness and find places for you to be like, yo, this is not comfortable for me. This is not good for me and change it and then find something that is and watch it reflect on your face yeah i mean it's weird and creepy and truman showy but at the same time you're also my friend yeah. and i like to see my friends grow and be better people the big thing for me i think recently the biggest light bulb moment was the gym yeah the gym has been has saved my life like absolutely po i know it's not for everybody I need to doing that yeah it's like i know it's not for everyone and i know it's hard but it's just like i started going like i've always kind of worked out like you were like, buff barely, as hell, dude. Like, there, like I had always kind of worked out like years for years, right? Yeah. But I had never really like taken it seriously, if that makes mm. any sense. Sure. And this like I basically started on like March thirtieth. It's currently May fourth, mm. and I've been every day except for once in the last Damn. since March thirtieth. That's a lot. Yeah. And I have just dumped my like entire soul into going to the gym. Like, <laughs> like basically like my whole being revolves around getting there and just doing it and then filling the rest of the day around it. Cause like my, de my depression was so bad there for like a two months ago that I just like, like my, I shut down and this was like one of the bad, like, cause like pre-therapy, I can, you can kind of separate me between like pre-therapy Adam and post-therapy Adam where it's like mm. pre-therapy Adam when he had a, when he got like a depressive episode would like shut down for like a month or like two months, you know, like where I would just like kind of just struggle along and like lay in bed if I didn't have anything else to do. Right. Mm -hmm. I would still go to work and stuff, but I wasn't there. And then sure. post therapy, it's like the episodes still happen, but they're like way shorter, like a couple days, you know, like much more manageable. And this last, like recently it was just like, it was literally like a month and a half of just like, I shut down. I completely shut down and mm. oh, I don't, I don't even, I can't even describe to you like what my living situation was like, but like when you like really live depressed, like when you're like, it's bad, you know, like, dishes are piling up, yeah, your clothes are piling up, and... dishes, clothes, like garbage, you know what garbage, I mean? Just like, yeah. Like it was bad, Shivam. Like, I'm just going to be honest with you. Like, it was just like, <laughs> I was at my worst, like probably a couple months ago. Mm. And then again, I got uncomfortable enough to make a change. And I was just like, I got to go back to the gym. I hated the way I looked. And that's not to say like, I think there's some ideal body form. No, yeah. But everybody's got like a thing in their mind that they want to feel like. Yes. Yeah. That's the you thing I try to, to like, I try to be sure to say that because like you can find love for yourself in a variety of different body forms. And it's like, yeah. but for me, I just, there's a certain thing that I want to do and the way I want to look. Sure. So then I started going like every day and I watched a, way too many YouTube videos <laughs> on fitness and like working out and like how to go about it and what to do. And I don't know. It's like, it's literally changed my life. Like I just, it's shown because like, yeah. You you have more energy, you have more like vitality in your mm -hmm. life. You don't see you you've got motivation. Yeah. Like that's one of the big things is like depression is not just being sad, it's about like draining your motivation and desire to do things. Yeah. And it's hard to get that. It's hard like 
it's like that law of physics, right? It's a body that's in rest is hard to get out of it being in rest, forcing yourself to go to the gym and then continuing to do that. The first month of going to a workout or changing your pattern of anything, be it like, you know, adding something that disrupts your normal routine mm -hmm. is super hard to do because your mind wants to follow the tracks it's always been following yeah and forcing yourself to do like no i'm going to go to the gym or no i'm going to sit and meditate for 10 minutes or no i'm going to bike to my son's school whatever it is mm -hmm. forcing yourself to do that and then sticking with it until you reroute your brain to accept that as part of your daily routine is the hardest part of you know humanity it's one of the hardest parts of mental health is finding a way to re to to force yourself through the crappy part to get to the part that works yeah right? like the same reason like changing your diet doesn't work all the time or like no. fixing your food portions or thing because it's hard you you're like i've got a way i do things i'm gonna do that mm -hmm. and that's why also it's hard like when you're unemployed for a long time to find your way to get back to doing something or when you've been out of practice or when you're out of shape it's like like for me, the only way I was able to go to the gym before is because my best friend used to sit there and he would call me at four in the morning and be like, get up, we got to go running. And I'm like, I hate you. And he's like, I don't care. Yeah. We got to go running. And having that is who's, who's got the time to do that. We're old. Yeah. <laughs> We've got lives. I just make time. Yeah. I don't know. I like forcing I, yourself to do something is something that my ADD brain can't do. Yeah. <laughs> See, like not everyone has that luxury. And again, I've always been, again, like I said, with streaming, it's like, I've always been like a very focused um mm. goal area oriented person and when i don't have that i really shut down sure um there's this like great i mean some of it i don't like trying to find a fitness youtuber that i liked was very hard there's one yeah. guy that i like but he still says some things that i don't like but i gotta take the good with the bad right and uh he basically talks about like hey when you're first starting going to the gym like we all go for selfish reasons right Mm -hmm. We don't like the way we look or we don't, we got, we got dumped or, you know, like we're, sure. it's, a re it's a revenge thing, you know, which is generally not very healthy. But once you get past that, you eventually start going because you're excited about the person you're working towards. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm at that, like I'm a month deep and I'm like, I think I can do this. You know, like nice. I never thought, I never thought that I would ever like, I always just kind of passed off that I would never get to the point where I was happy with the way I look. Yeah. And I'm just like, I can see it. I can see it. I've like the light bulb has gone off and I'm like, I am ready to, to absolutely bust my chops to get in I'll there. And like, nothing <laughs> excites me more when I'm like, it's leg day. And it's like, all right, like how miserable can I make myself? You know what I mean? Like in, in like the good way, like I want to go sure. work. I want to work. I'm going to the yeah. gym to work. And it's just like, that's the most exciting thing in my life right now. And thank God, like I didn't like turn to like drugs or alcohol. Right. <laughs> we have magic. We're already there. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know what I mean though? Like I'm yeah, lucky. I do. I like, I just, you mean. I just didn't, I just didn't turn to something that was like self-destructive. Thankfully. Yeah, it's like, look, if you're going to be addicted to something, yeah. find something that's going to be beneficial to your life to be addicted to. <laughs> yeah. And it's you just know? like, it's like, I am so completely jacked up on like, just like, exercise like the gym and the person that I'm working to become and it's starting to bleed into all the other aspects of my life right like this regimented like thing that I'm doing every day I'm just like oh and with depression it's like you know how it like with depression like my house was my apartment was a pigsty mm -hmm. you know and then I started going to the gym and I realized if I can go to the gym every day I can clean my apartment you know what I mean like I can do this every yeah. week Mm -hmm. And it starts bleeding over and then it starts bleeding over into streaming and then it starts bleeding over into lure work and then it bleeds yeah. over into my relationships. And it's just like, it's this compounding effect that I will scream from the mountaintops. It doesn't have to be going to the gym, but just find something that something. you can work at. Yes. It's so important. Well, because once you have like this drive and this ethic and this like urge to better yourself somehow, it compound it's like the same way that like when everything is bad it, everything else becomes bad mm -hmm. when everything when one part of your life is good you can expand that outwards into the rest of your life and then you uplift yourself entirely yeah the problem is a lot of times that people like fixate on the going to the gym part as opposed to the doing something that's making you better part yeah. It doesn't need to be that. It can be no. Duolingo. It can be, you know, be anything. gardening, whatever, yeah. making sourdough. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Like 
that's one of the things that I became very good at during pandemic was like, oh, I really enjoy making bread. And now mm-hmm. I'm going to go off and start learning other things to make myself just enjoy things more. I started doing like stained glass and whatever. It's like, why really? Cool. That's so sick. <laughs> my, my, my wife's grandfather was an artist and had all this stuff. And when he passed, I got all of his cool tools. And so I've started so working cool. on learning how to make stained glass stuff. It is so cool. It's I'm, I'm still working at it. I don't have anything done yet, but it's like, yeah. It's rad. It's That's really, such a really, random really... thing to fall yeah. into. <laughs> uh, well, it's more like, oh, all this equipment is like thousands of dollars and stuff. And he's yeah. got all this glass and all these manuals. I'm like, I've always wanted to do this. Why not? Why yeah, not? Why not? Yeah. why not me? Why not now? Let's go. Yeah. I never um, like I never thought that it would bleed over that easily. Yeah. Or like you just don't and in think a month it, like, or something, that's a lot you, too. When you're in depression, it's just like it it's it feels like it's that's it. You know, you're like yeah. you're stuck in it, there's no way out. And I can say to you from personal experience that it's just like, just find something. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what it is. And then hold on to it for dear life. Mm-hmm. Like, just do not let go and yes. just keep working at it. And I promise you things will get better. It's, it's so important to try. Yeah. It's just so important to just like force yourself to try and to do something. It doesn't need to, it need to be out of your comfort zone. It's just like, Find yourself something that you really enjoy doing and that enjoyment will bleed into everything else you do. And then you'll just be a better person for yourself, if nothing else. And when you're a better person for yourself, you're a better person for everybody. Yes. You know, well, you know what they say about comfort zones, right? They're great Mm -hmm. and all, but nothing grows there. (laughs) (laughs) You know? Fact. Fact. (laughs) Nothing, nothing grows in a comfort zone. You just gotta, you gotta do something. That's truth, man. And I mean, like I get a lot of questions. Sometimes people are like, I don't know how to start at the gym. It's like, you know, when I started, I, when I started the gym, I literally showed up and I would just copy what other people were doing. (laughs) I just honestly like something as easy as just get on a treadmill, put on it like a podcast and walk for like half of the length of that podcast. Yes. Do like 30 minutes. You don't even need to do a lot. Yeah. Like, do 30 minutes like three days a week you'll see changes you'll notice Seriously. your energy and you're like as long as you're you have this regimented thing that you're doing that's why like i mean like i don't want to bring up the military but it's like it is a proven like it does add like structure to people's lives you know what i mean dude you know what people like me desperately need structure like mm-hmm. i hated how ha- i had a dog for uh, the one year of the pandemic before we had to give it back to the uh, breeder because it was not working with our family life. But I hated having a dog. I'm not a dog person. I'm not a pet person. Uh, My dog was fine. It's nothing wrong with him. It was just, we just didn't click. However, the upside was I had to walk that dog like three times a day or something. And that got me walking around the block. And I, because it was a terrier and needed super energy, I had to walk a hell of a lot to get this thing worn down. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to be putting on some long ass podcast and we're just going to, walk until I'm out of listening to this guy tell me about ancient Russia or whatever it is. Yeah. Snowball and, effect. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, did force, like that's the one regret I have about not having a dog anymore is that I don't have a forced reason to go out on walks. Yeah. And having that made me better in everything else just because I'm like, I now have energy and I've got like this drive and stuff. It's, it's cool. crazy how much energy it gives you. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. Crazy. Like I am, so I usually try to time my workouts to the second I get, I leave my workout, I'm going straight to loading ready run stuff because Mm -hmm. that's like my contract, even though like streaming is kind of like a full-time thing, but my contracted stuff I take very seriously. So it's like any lure stuff. I like to get there literally like I'm coming straight from the gym to lure stuff. So I'm Mm. all, I'm just like, why? Yeah, 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 let's draft. Let's go. I am all jacked up. Like I'm just like court, like it's court. Like even right now, I just got back from the gym like three hours ago or something like that, but I'm still like, (laughs) I can feel it. Right. There's a, there's a energy, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I seriously, one day I want you to go onto like, you know, Corey stream where she's doing like the talking sims or yeah. whatever and you're like yeah let's go listen to these people tell me about some long ass story about feelings let's go i did a, <laughs> i did a talking sim with them about darkest dungeon which is oh, like that's cool. you can look it up and i explain why i love the game so much and talk about yeah, it they and... invited me on to do raji which was hella fun so oh really Yo, that's yeah like, sick. The Indian, yeah. like adventure game I'm like oh i've got yeah, stories yeah. to tell yeah. it turned out to be three hours of shivam story time it's yeah. like oh well that sounds pretty good is, to me this is what i'm good at doing it's like hey you put me in front of a microphone i can tell you i mean that's what this podcast is right it's, yeah it's story time <laughs> um i really you know what i'll say this much mm-hmm. i hate horror games 
I mm-hmm. hate horror games. I'm not a fan of the horror genre in general. And yet I will watch you and Ben Ulmer sit and play the grossest, goriest goddamn games on the planet. Yeah. I mean, there were, there are times when I'm like, just got it on the background while I'm trying to do other things. And I have to all tab away because it's literally just squelching noises for half an hour. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but listening to you two just swear very loudly and like yeah. play resident evil 12 or something. It's like, <laughs> what is going on? Yeah. That stream has been a lifesaver for me too. Like working with Ben. He's such a know. joy ball. I yeah. swear to God. I love Ben to death. Like, I mean, I like working with everyone. I mean, one of my strengths as a person is that I am very good at working with a very wide range of people. Yeah. As a performer, like as a streamer and as a, like a on camera talent. Mm-hmm. So I find that part very easy. I find it almost harder to work alone because mm, I don't yes. have anyone to play off of. I mean, most people probably do. Can you imagine how bad my podcast is when I don't have a guest? <laughs> <laughs> talk by yourself. So tell me I about really... myself. <laughs> yeah. It's like, please. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I love doing Let's Know and I love all the stuff that I do. And I, I, I don't know. I'm just like incredibly yeah. lucky to be surrounded by such incredible people. That's so good you know? to hear, man. I'm just, <laughs> it makes me happy to see you feeling good about yourself. Yeah, I do. And I'm, I don't know. I'm just like, I'm stoked for you. Like, I love your stream. I've really loved what you've been doing to yourself. And I think your hair, like I said in the beginning, looks yeah. sweet. And I want my hair to look like that. But my <laughs> hair is a curly ass mess. Yeah. The longer it gets, the curlier it gets. And I don't know what to do about that. I think it looks good. <laughs> I it's like so it. Weird. Yeah. It's like, yeah. it's like literally fixed waves now. And I'm yeah. like, this is so weird. No, nah, you just got to rock it. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to try to like grow it so I can pull it back and it'll look sweet. Yeah. Um, but wow, we've been wow, we've been, we've going, been talking yeah. for a minute. Do you wanna, <laughs> so, do you, anyways, yeah. we should we should wrap. Okay. Otherwise, I will hate myself in four days when I have to edit this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, if people wanted to find you, yeah, where could they go? Uh, okay, so I stream every day, Monday to Friday, and sometimes on the weekends at twitch.tv slash cbats s e a b a t s. Uh, mm. you can find me on Twitter at wake up super. I, <laughs> cause sea bats was taken when I made the Twitter account. So you got your street fighter. Yeah. So I, at first <laughs> I tried wake up ultra because I played street fighter four a lot, but that was I already taken. street fighter four for, for some reason, wake up super worked. Um, <laughs> and then you can find me like a numerous days of the week at twitch.tv slash loading ready run doing stuff on Tuesdays and Fridays. And I do magic stuff. I do pre pre releases for them. Yeah. Um, I'm going to start, actually have a couple of rec- like recorded drafts that I did nice. on my own time. So I'm going to upload those hopefully soon to YouTube. Um, uh, I think my YouTube is like just Adam Savadan. So if you want to <laughs> check that, it's hopefully in the next couple of days, I'll get those started. So Sweet. I'm just trying to keep busy. Yeah. I know that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, as always, you can find me at Gear Report Gears. You can find this podcast anywhere podcasts are sold or at Cool Stuff Inc. every Tuesday or at YouTube every when I get around to uploading it. Um, this show is brought to you by Cool Stuff Architect and Coalesque. And you can get my t shirt and stickers. It's super cool. And as always, my friends, it is not magic without the gathering. And we will see you next time. Bye.